gotta get inside outdoors on the big game. <laughs> Rocking on to Kansas again. Well, it's been a week. Can we finally get on with the show now? Yeah, let's get on with it. Hey, we've been in Kansas for six days now, and we've got some trail camera pictures of one incredible old beast of a buck with a huge drop tine. And the best part of it is we have a stand set right outside his bedroom door. That's right. And if the trail cam pictures weren't a good enough indication that we were in the right spot, the fact that he just stepped out at 60 yards and is closing the gap is a pretty good indicator. You got him? You on him? Well, this buck had just stepped out of the woods right behind a doe. And while you can't tell it on the footage, if that deer wasn't 300 pounds, he wasn't a pound. Oh yeah, this joker was huge mm -hmm. now. And you know, I can remember you so clearly saying, that's our boy, that's our boy. And I started thinking, I gotta get an arrow in this thing. I've gotta get him in range. Yeah, I had to make a few adjustments on the camera so we could get good footage of him. But ultimately, the light is what was hurting us. Yeah, you know, I had him at 60 yards, which is, you know, in that low light, I didn't want to chance anything more than 40. I hit the snort wheeze, he hits a 40 yard mark. I've already ranged him, I got the pin on him, but I just can't line up that peep because of the low light and then my ethics just kind of took over and I couldn't punch that release. Well, while you didn't get to pull the trigger on old drop time that night, the next morning was a completely different story. We saw a big nasty last night, the big drop time, the deer that's only lived in our dreams and on that cutting back camera so far, come out. It was last light though, and he stepped out there at 50 yards. I just couldn't get comfortable with that peep sight at that range. So let down, he eased on out in the field with the does. We got up at three o'clock this morning, folks, and it's just left for four. And we're going to get in there about an hour and a half before daylight even thinks about breaking to try to keep from spooking him. And just maybe, praying dear God, that maybe we get a second chance at this big joker. But we got up this early, let's not sit around and talk so long. 
Let's go. The end is near. The end is finally near. Well, for this Kansas trip anyway. See what I got to work with? <laughs> well, the pressure was on. I knew that. This is the last chance that I'm going to have to put my Kansas tag on a deer, and all bets are off. Yeah, and it's definitely time to get the job done on this deal. And it's a good thing we got an early jump on it because the party started just after daybreak. Watch it, watch it. Might go down right there. He went up to this tree. Watch him. He's hard bad. Seven days, seven straight days. Mm -hmm. We're leaving tonight. Tonight, I mean, when we get out of here, we're gonna pull stands, pack clothes, pack trailers, and we're going back to T-Town to Tulsa. Dave, does the term down to the wire mean anything to you? Apparently not. Yeah. Well, hey, you gotta play the hand you're dealt, right? I mean, and we maxed out on this deal. Well, that's for sure, because we're pretty sure that buck crashed right there in that tree line. We decided to go ahead and give him a little time before we headed out after him. And little did we know, well, you probably could have found that jugger with your eyes closed. Adrenaline right now. Still probably about 50 degrees, but we're warming up. We 
got a big boy down. I don't think he's gonna be very far. Right here's blood. Right here. We let him we let him go for about two hours and some of us started to dry a little bit, but right there is dang sure blood. Look, Tim, look right here. Now, I'm telling you, that joker ain't gonna make it very far. That's where he was standing when we last saw him. Cause right there's a tree stand, you can see Hammer laying down there, or standing down there. But he has to be, Tim, look. <laughs> look right there, see him in the sun? Boom, baby. Yes, sir, Ree. look at that. Oh, man. I didn't know if he, can you believe that? Can you believe that, Jack? I, th I didn't know if he made it through this thing. We didn't want to push him. Holy strokes, let me pull him out of here. This dude come in there this morning, wanted to fight Hammer. He come down there, thought he was big and bad and that that beam is a little bit better what an awesome deer two years in a row in kansas uh, two two big eight pointers two years in a row 500 yards apart where you last day dave they call me that for a reason and i'm not kidding you folks like i told you in the stand we are leaving tonight this is the 11th and a half hour but we got it done in Kansas again this year. Where you at on that, Mr. T? Tim's worked his tail off for this deer too. We have been getting up at three o'clock in the morning every morning for seven days straight. And it's paid off though. It has paid off. From now on, when you're in front of the camera, it's a two day trip. First day is gonna be hanging every stand we have and moving all over the place. And the second day we'll hunt because he don't ever kill it until the last day anyway. You, you act like I can control what the deer do. It, you know, when I can and I, and I start being able to predict that stuff, I'll let you know. Well, I wish you would because I'm tired of spending a week long trip for a two day hunt. My luck may seem to hold out to the last day every time I'm in front of the camera, yeah. but get me behind the camera. Now that seems to be a whole different deal. Well, at least it was a few weeks later when you went back up to Kansas to film Shed. Yeah, Shed calls me and says, hey Dave, I got my hands on a Kansas rifle tag. You wanna come? So I grabbed the camera and headed up there with him. Little did I know it was all gonna happen on the first day. There's a doe. Some does coming out. It's a buck. Nice buck. Here he comes. Following her out across that field. Got a shot. Hang on. He's going out the end of the field. Might have to reach out and touch him with this one. Drag on it. Stop. Stop. There he is. Right there. Go down. You got him, dog. Yeah! Dag on. 
Man. What a shot, Jack. I had the AT&T because he was out there. It was like Davy Crockett at the Alamo picking him off. Dang, gone. More like Quigley. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. I can't believe I missed him at 100 yards. You said the gun was sighted in. I should have shot it. He's down right out there. He went right down in that creek and didn't pop out. He's got to be right there. Man. Good deal, that was man. awesome. I think you until he Give me some. Mile, Mark, uh, he was out there. Let's go check him out. Kansas 8. I can't believe he's trying to blame me and that rifle for his non-shooting skills. Well, he had to blame someone. I guess. Well, Kansas was great to us this year. Matter of fact, it was so good for you guys. You got to do some other kind of hunting afterwards. Well, the place we were at, Don's Guide Service, yeah. is really kind of famous for their pheasant hunting. So we'll, since we got our deer business taken care of so quickly, we had time to load the shotguns and hit the Milo. Yeah, I missed out again. We're gonna go try to kill some pheasants. Don's specialty. And we have seen a pile of them. He's got some good dogs, and we're getting ready to go see how good they are. Point right here. No. Break out. Down behind it. It's starting. Point right there. Boom! Look, he's right here. Here we go. Nice, shooting. There you go. Oh. Oh. <laughs> what are you doing? Look at this. Poof! Feathers blowing back. <laughs> Don Don is the man. That's how he rolls. They in the smack down on some birds. Well, we're going to hit another place or we? Let's go get them. Sweet. Come on. I gotta get inside 